Still TV. Still have a green screen background. I haven't gotten that fixed yet. Something's going on with my GPU on this computer. So looking forward for this new one to come in. How are you guys doing today? You guys and girls doing today? Hope you're doing well. Uh, tonight we are going to, um, what are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to show, it's kind of getting around the holiday season and stuff. So we're going to make some decorative trim, trim that we can use for accenting different projects. Um, uh, whether it be holiday projects or furniture projects or, or what have you, we're going to build some trim. Uh, we're going to build trim two ways. One, we're going to model it in a spire. So that'll be one way. Uh, and then the second way is we are going to uh, look at the molding tool path in like VCAR, VCAR Pro or desktop. Even Aspire has the molding tool path as well. We're going to look at that and we're going to uh, make some trim that way and then add some components to it. Uh, we're going to start off in Aspire. Uh, for those of you that don't have Aspire, stick with us. We're going to get into the VCAR uh, here in a little bit. But we're going to start off with Aspire and we're going to build some trim uh, using some uh, different vectors or images and just some general shapes and stuff. And we're going to extrude some shapes. We're going to create some trim pieces that we can cut out. And then, of course, we can do whatever we want with those as far as, um, you know, mitering and making frames or doing decorative trim on, uh, like I said, different furniture projects or what have you. But this is going to be the general steps, right? Uh, the general steps to get us uh, to um, uh, make some trim. And the reason why this project came up is uh, for the Digital Wood Carver, sorry, for the Spindle TV trainees, the people who pay for subscription for the training, um, they're getting their projects tonight after class. They're getting an email project and um, uh, one of the projects is going to be uh, some decorative trim for some, you know, that they can use in, in different projects and all. And I thought, you know, uh, this would be a pretty interesting class to just show the process uh, because you might have a project, whether it be a box project or a furniture piece of project or a picture frame type project or just kind of some frame in general. You might be trimming, I don't know, whatever your house, who knows? Well, you might want to make your own custom trim. Uh, we can do that by, you know, creating a molding profile and molding it. Uh, or we can just make some general trim pieces, some accent pieces and things. And that's what we're going to focus on. So with that being said, uh, man, I look like I got the shit beat out of me. Excuse me, Lena, but look like I got beat up or something. Uh, 45 years old and I still have acne issues. What's up with that? Uh, too much chocolate, evidently. Okay. I think that's a myth. You can eat chocolate. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's get into our Vetrix software. And as I said, we're going to start out in Aspire. Um, and then we're going to move over to the molding toolpath, which, which can be used with VCarve or Aspire or, you know, VCarve is VCarve Pro or Desktop. So Desktop Pro or Aspire. A little wired today, um, mentally drained. Uh, and also for those of you that uh, weren't with me last week, uh, hopefully you are all with me last week, but uh, for those of you that weren't, I made an announcement at the end. Today's class, tonight's class is going to be the last class for the next couple of weeks. Um, I've got to prepare for some Canadian virtual shows. I got to drive up to Indiana to our home office at Digital Woodcarver and do a live show there and a training class and stuff. Uh, so Spindle TV's uh, live videos will uh, be postponed uh, until, you know, the next month or so. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I will throw up little recorded videos that won't be live. I'll throw some videos out there for you guys and girls, but I am going to be taking a few weeks off from the live streams. And um, uh, so I just wanted to throw out that announcement again. All right, let's jump into this. Um, for right now, this is going to be a single-sided project. Now, um, if I uh, were creating a two-sided project, you know, on this trim, I might need to carve a rabbit on one side of or something, you know, for uh, a frame for a, a backer board to go into or a piece of glass or what have you, if it was like a piece of molding or trim for a frame. Uh, but uh, we're going to start off with just a flat trim accent piece that we could 
you know, either uh, route on a routing table, a rabbit into it, or, um, you know, eventually turn it into a two-sided project and stuff. But let's look at our setup. So uh, depending on the size of your machine um, and, and everything, uh, you know, however long strips uh, you want to make, you can. Uh, when I make my accent trim pieces, I usually make them in 24-inch pieces. 24 inch pieces, uh, unless it's something that is a bigger project then you know, I can go up to 40 inches for my cutting area and I can go even longer than that, you know, by using the tiling method. But what we're going to do is we're going to stick with a 24 inch piece. Now the height or the width of the trim, you know, that's going to be based on, uh, what particular, um, you know, what part or what project it's going on to how wide it needs to be in things. Uh, for, uh, this particular piece, I'm going to go with a, uh, two inch, um, wide piece of trim, uh, and it will be three quarters of an inch thick. Okay. And, uh, you, um, uh, again, you would vary this width depending on the, the trim that you're making. And these are just uh, you know, I'm, I, I make a bunch of these and uh, I have them cut out uh, and I have them stored on a shelf that uh, I can just pull and take over to my miter saw and miter them up, do whatever I need to do uh, as far as, uh, you know, um, uh, that goes as far as attaching it to the project. And uh, these are just some general trim, you know, accents, right? Some different trim accents, you know, it might be for a base of something. It could be for, you know, the front of a drawer, who knows? Um, and, uh, you know, so, uh, two inch wide strip is what I'm going to do. 24 inches long, three quarter inches thick. Uh, I will be referencing off the machine bed on this because, um, when it gets modeled, the whole entire piece, the whole surface is getting milled away. So there will be no surface left to touch off to for, uh, changing bits from the rough cut to the finish cut. So I'll be referencing my Z zero position off my waste board, off my machine bed. Uh, and, um, I will be starting in the bottom left corner of this, uh, project and what I want to do now in Aspire, and I'm going to hit cancel on this real quick. Uh, what I want to do is I want to hold the shift key down and, and create a new file, uh, holding that shift key because on this trim piece, let's go 24 by two. Um, I want when I create a model, especially in a spiral, I work with an extremely high or maximum uh, resolution on the modeling. I want to create the models, and this is going to be a model piece, a, a 3D model piece component. Uh, I create them in a very high resolution to minimize uh, pixelation or, you know, uh, to help increase the quality of the cut. So uh, we're going to work extremely high tonight. Uh, again, I'm going to work off the machine bed, lower left corner. I'm going to use an extremely high resolution and I'm able to access these two extra resolutions by holding that shift key when I click on create a new project, create a new file. All right. So we're going to go extremely high and we're going to click OK. All right. Now, uh, let me see if I can. Bear with me a second here. Let me see if I can put that taskbar down there at the bottom. There we go. Uh, so we can see this full screen without anything over here on the right. Um, thanks you. Thank you, Troy. I definitely uh, will be, uh, you know, uh, spending time with family all, but literally it's all going to be mostly work. Uh, I've got um, a Canadian trade show, live trade show to do. I got to sit in front of a camera, guys, for three days straight. Uh, for eight hours a day, literally in front of a camera and be at a virtual booth in my workshop. That's going to be an interesting thing, uh, sitting in front of a camera, waiting for people to come up and uh, talk to me virtually. That's going to be interesting. Um, and uh, then after that, I got to get up to Indiana for uh, our digital woodcarver user group training class. Uh, so in some of that time, I'll take some time off. Uh, at the end of this, I'll show you one of the things I did to my CNC that uh, has been taking up my late evenings and everything. It'll be an interesting little thing to show you. 
All right, let's get started here. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle. Uh, this rectangle is going to stretch the uh, full uh, width of my piece here. And uh, I do want it to be about a half inch wide, a uh, quarter to a half inch, you know, somewhere around there. Uh, and in this case, uh, let's go, I'm going to actually break it down. I'm going to go three eighths. I'm going to split it right down the middle. And what my goal is, is to make sure that this thing is snapped right to the edge here. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to have it selected and I'm going to mirror that. And I want to create a mirrored copy. I'm going to flip it about the job center and I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm going to create one on the other side here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to then select both of these and I'm going to um, hold down my shift key. I'm going to double click on them to put them in transform mode, transform mode. Uh, that means that I can move, size, rotate, scale, and align while I'm in transform mode. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to stretch this out a bit so that it extends out on both sides. Because uh, when I create the rounded component, uh, it's going to kind of taper off on the ends. And I don't want that. I want a nice rounded end here. Uh, you'll see that in a moment. All right. Uh, with that. Let's jump over to the modeling tab here, and uh, I want to create a uh, shape. Use the Create Shape tool. Now, this shape is going to have a dome shape. Uh, it's going to be 90 degrees, uh, a full rounded dome, uh, and it's going to have a height, a base height to it of a quarter of an inch. Okay. And uh, there's going to be no limit on that round over on that 90 degree uh, curved profile. And it's going to be an add combined mode right now. And uh, this will be my edge components. Edge components. And we're going to click apply to build both of those. OK, and once it builds those, uh, we're going to jump into a split view. Uh, let's actually go a split view this way since it's a long piece. And you can see if we uh, look down the end of this part along the X axis here and let's zoom in. Uh, what we've just created is these two edge profiles here. Oops, let's, that was a little bit too much zoom. Uh, we just created these. It's got a quarter inch base height, and then I've got that 90 degree curved profile on top of it. Okay, that's going to be the edges. Uh, then what I want to do is I'm going to uh, close out of this. And I'm going to go back to my rectangle tool for a moment. And on my rectangle tool, I'm going to snap to the inside edge, the center of this right here. And I'm going to drag a rectangle and I'm going to snap to that other center on that other end down here. Okay, I'm going to create this rectangle here. All right. Cool. Can this be done on the mini carver? This can absolutely be done on the mini carver. Uh, if you're running Aspire, uh, this part that we're creating the molding, uh, where we're modeling some molding, Sherry. And um, if you have Aspire, you can absolutely do that. Uh, if you're running desktop or pro, then you're going to want to stick around when we talk about uh, creating the molding using the molding toolpath and some profiles and things. Uh, but yes, it can be carved on the mini carver. Absolutely. Um, All right. And uh, Blue Knight, you need to do a 3D print of yourself for camera work. A 3D print of yourself for camera work. Um, I wish I could uh, clone myself for camera work. Uh, I would love to have a cameraman operating the camera uh, and stuff in these live events and all. But uh, I almost thought about, I, I think I know what you're talking about as far as sitting in front of the camera for that eight hours so I could sneak away. 
I swear to you guys, I have a friend who do, does all of our big banners and sign work and everything uh, at the, the sign company. And I really almost uh, commissioned him to make a big life-size kind of printout of me, a picture of me, so I could sit it in front of the camera <laughs> when I wanted to eat or something. Uh, but anyway, I didn't do that. Okay, so with this rectangle uh, drawn here, uh, I'm going to go ahead now and go back to that modeling shape tool. And uh, let me get that uh, modeling tool pop back up here. Oh, I hate when it does that. There we go. Oh, you son of a gun. Snuck away from me. There we go. One more time. Awesome. All right. I'm modeling create shape tool here. Uh, we're going to go back into there and with this selected, this is going to be a flat profile. I just want to build up the, the center area. And the reason why I have it going halfway through the molding is I want it to merge with those two edges and everything. So I don't see any uh, gaps in between the two components. So it's going to merge into the middle of these two end pieces or side pieces that I made. Uh, this piece is going to have a base height of a quarter of an inch. Uh, that's all there is to that flat component. Uh, it will be a merge. It will be a merge. Uh, we're not adding it to it or anything. We're going to merge with it and we're going to click apply. And so that's going to build up a model in this center area here. And again, if we look at it uh, from the end, what I've just done is I've created that. Oops. Oops. Slow it down there. Slow down there, Hoss. Uh, I've just created this center piece right here. Okay. Uh, so we've got that. All right. So now this is going to be the foundation or the base of my trim. Okay. This is going to be the foundation or base of the trim. Now from here, let's go back into the 2D view for just a moment. And uh, let's start laying out some of the decor, some of the design that's going to go into the middle here. And... Um, Let's go into our drawing tab and I'm going to import and bear with me a second here. There we go. Go back to my drawing tab. I'm going to import a, either a bitmap if I'm tracing the image or a vector if I've already got a vector, you know, like a DXF file, a DWG, EPS, AI, PDF, all that stuff. Um, we're going to, you know, uh, import it as a vector and not as an image to trace. Now I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, and uh, let's start off with importing a vector, um, uh, DXF vector. And um, let's go back to our downloads here. Doo, doo, doo. And uh, let's grab this uh, trim one vector here. And uh uh, that's not the one that I want. Where is my, did I not save it as a DXF? Uh, okay. Let me, let me look. Did I say, I thought I saved it. Bear with me a second here. Boop, 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 um, no, I didn't. Okay, let's go back. Uh, not a problem. Let's go back and we're going to, instead of a DXF, we're just going to go in and create an uh, import a bitmap image. Um, now, uh, the bitmap image could be a uh, many things, uh, depending on what it is that you're wanting to do. In this case, uh, I'm going to do two uh, different uh, designs. Uh, the first one uh, will be this floral type uh, calligraphy design. So we'll import that in and um, we will trace, open up the trace tool on this. And I'm going to select, I'm going to draw a box here and I want to select the area that I want to trace. So I'm just going to trace with inside this box right here. I don't know if you guys knew about that feature or not, um, but you can uh, select the areas that you want to trace. And for this, I'm going to go up to a 
85 on here and I'm going to click preview to trace that area out and click apply and I'm going to go ahead and delete that image out of there so that'll create this uh, graphic here this vector and for right now let's move that up out of the way okay and let's bring in another image since we're kind of in that stage of things uh, and on this other image we're going to grab uh, this image here and we're going to go into our trace tool turn off our fading and on this one I believe I'm going to crank it up to eighty eighty maybe 75 let's go yep 75 on this one all right we're going to go to 75 on that and preview that and click apply and close all right uh let's go ahead and let's move this over here uh, i want to ungroup this so i want to ungroup these guys so they're all individual and i want to group them individually so i'm going to hit the letter g on my keyboard group i'm going to select this and g for group and select this and g for group uh let's go ahead and turn off our bitmap layer uh to get rid of that and uh, so now i have two different elements that i can kind of work with and actually four if you count these individually and things now the thing about this image here uh let's kind of uh pull this down uh independent and let's look at it closely Notice how it's cut off here and notice on the other end how that where that cutoff is is continued here. This is a one of those uh, continuous patterns that we can run continuously uh, in you know a direction. So let's start off with that and uh, I'm gonna bring it up here and let's size it up first before I get it positioned. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna scale this up accordingly and um, let's keep scaling all right and let's go ahead and I'm gonna go into my alignment tool and align to the center of my material just to make sure it's aligned to the center of material so I've scaled it to where it's right on the edge of those two round overs I've left some space here in between uh, as a matter of fact, I need to scale it down just a little bit more because uh, I'm going to be adding a draft to this when I create the shape. So let me scale it down just a little bit more. All right, we'll go there. All right. Now on this one here, I can actually just grab it and snap it right to the end. If I would have grabbed it in the right spot, let's do that again. Snap it right to the end. And I'm going to make sure it's centered. Now, um, I can continue this part on uh, one of two ways, like if it was a long piece of trim or what have you, I can continue it on one of two ways. Uh, I can use in my drawing tools, I can use my array copy, or I can just double click on this. I can hold down my control key, and if I grab it at the end, I can just drag a copy and snap it to this end and so on and so forth and just keep dragging it down. Uh, either way, if I use the array copy tool, um, the uh, I'm going to create one row. Let's say it's going to be three columns, but part of it's going to get cut off because my piece is only 24 inches. Uh, and there'd be a gap a gap between the right side of one and the left side of the other of zero. There'd be a gap of zero on that. And when I copy it, it would create that, uh, that connection. And you can see where those two parts come together. Uh, we would just have to do a little bit of cleanup on these two parts so that they blend uh, more seamlessly and they're not stepping like this uh, and everything. So when this graphic was created, uh, it to be a seamless uh, kind of pattern. Uh, it wasn't 
on that seam, on that seam, it wasn't cut quite right, right? When they made it, uh, they were off a little bit. Uh, so literally, if I uh, came into, let's move this. If I move this out just a little bit, you can kind of see where those lines would actually, you know, connect uh, and everything where the proper arc would have been. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can validate that even further by going into node edit mode. And on this here, I could just right click and turn this into an arc, <laughs> not that much of an arc. And I could bring that down to what looks like a natural curve you know here i can drag this arc to you know whatever would look like a natural curve and stuff and what i want to do is i want to bring it down so that where this part here when i move it in i can find hold down the control key and sneak up right about where these ends will come together. So I'm just holding the control key down so I can micro move and right about there, right about there looks good. So that would be where this uh, natural arc would curve if I pulled it out even more. And what I can do from here is just come in and trim away and I got to ungroup. I can't trim on a grouped item. I got to ungroup those items. And um, I can trim away uh, this line here and this inside line there uh, to create that, you know, that seam. Now, if we look, if we inspect this even further, we've got this hook right here, right? So if I go into node editing mode on this hook, I can simply just delete this point and I can turn this around and pretty much... Uh, Instead of it being a Bezier curve, I can pretty much turn it into a line uh, to kind of get that. And if I wanted to, I could smooth this so it's a little bit more of a natural curve there. Okay. So it's a little bit more of a curve. So if I undo those two things, what I did in node editing mode is I deleted this point. And this is a Bezier curve right here. So this curve is still kind of flexed around. Um, I'm just turning it into a line. So that kind of gives me, it kind of straightens things out. And then on this here where that curve is starting to break, uh, I'm just right clicking and I'm smoothing that point out. So it can kind of smooth out to a natural break. Okay. So now my seam is running seamlessly for these two parts. But once again, you know, I've got to come down here and, I would either, uh, there's kind of two choices here. Uh, I could either, you know, delete this and, and grab what I just fixed and recopy it, or I could just go in and clean it up. There's only one more here. So I'm just going to go in and clean it up. Uh, so I'm going to select, get out of node editing mode for a minute. I'm going to go into node editing and turn this straight line into an arc. I'm going to pull that arc down to where it looks a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to select this group here and I'm just going to bump over and I'm going to zoom in on one of them. All I need to see is one and I'm going to hold my control key down so I can micro move and get those two lines to join nicely there like that. And then I'm going to ungroup my selection so that I can trim this and this away. And then the last thing I need to do is the same thing I did on the other one is do a little bit of cleanup, node edit, select this line here, delete this point, turn this Bezier curve into a line and then smooth this point, kind of get that smooth point, you know, and things. All right. So now I've got this uh, trim running, you know, consecutively straight across here. 
And then of course, at some point it's going to get cut off. Now, um, what I want to do is this curve, this part right here. Okay. This is the cut part that we've been kind of cleaning up, you know, on the different places and everything, you know, it's the same as this flat one down here. Um, what I want to do is where I decide to, um, clean this up. Like for instance, if I get rid of the rest of this, oops, I'm still in node editing mode. If I get rid of all this excess here, okay, I have a choice. I could run my trim out, you know, another inch or so to center it up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these parts here. All these parts here. Now, actually, let me do that a little bit differently. I'm going to draw a line. I got to cheat. Let me cheat for a second. I'm going to steal this piece right here uh, and I'm going to snag it. I'll put it back where it was. Uh, I'm going to bring it all the way to the end here for a minute. And uh, let's use our alignment tool to get it centered up and down. And I'm going to use my arrow key and I'm going to bump it over. And do, 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 do. Let me find my arc here. Oop. I held the shift key, not the control key. So right about there. And that would give me a place uh, that I can go into node edit mode. And this isn't, this step really isn't necessary, but uh, it's nice to keep things consistent. And on node edit mode, um, somewhere in this general area, I'm going to cut the vector. Oops, let me select the right one. Uh, in this general area. All right, let me fix my arc here. Let me get right where I need to be. Let's get out of node edit mode and I'm going to hold down my control key and sneak right up on that right there. Okay. A little oversized, undersized, but that's okay. I'll go into node edit mode. And right here on this, I'm going to cut the vector up here going to cut the vector I'm going to snag this <laughs> that's um let me get uh let me get back where I was I just did a control z 2 3 times to get back uh here to this point because when I cut the vector in node edit mode, I cut the wrong vector. I, I want to cut this vector coming here. And over here, uh, just right straight across, I'm going to cut the vector there. Because this part right here needs to go back to my beginning. So I'm going to grab that and... Pull this back over here, grab it right on the center and snap it to the center right there where it was. All right, over here where I cut this vector here, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to join this vector with a straight line. Join with a straight line, right? So it kind of gives that same cutoff that I had before on these patterns before I crossed them together. Now, when I select this uh, pattern in here, I'm just literally on my 24 inch piece of trim because it is a seamless pattern and stuff. I'm going to center it uh, left and right on my material, you know, where my material is and everything. I'm going to center this and stuff. And um, let me see where my... Uh, perfect. Now don't ignore this box right here. This box is not my, my part ends right here. 
my 3D part ends right on this line. So I'm snipping right here and right here, right? Okay, so I've got those two parts centered. Cool, cool. All right, uh, so with that, I'm not even, not even worried about the vectors overlapping here. You'll see why. Uh, I'm not worried about these vectors. I'm not going to cut them away or delete them or anything like that because when I create the 3D component, that it'll automatically cut off anything beyond that's beyond my work area. Okay. So now that I have that part uh, laid out and centered in here, I'm going to go back to the modeling, create shape tool. Okay. And uh, I want this shape to have a curved shape, uh, a curved profile, but I only want that curve to be uh, about 40 degrees uh, on the angle. And I want it to have a, um, a quarter inch base height. And I want to make sure that I am selecting the correct vectors that I want these guys here to create the shape on. And let's go back to our split view and I'll answer suicide at all times question here in just a second. Um, so I want to go 40 degrees. Might even go 30, but 40 is going to be fine with a quarter inch base height. And uh, I want to um, merge this with uh, the existing model component. And I, I want no limit on that 40 inches. I don't want to limit it. And, uh, or 40 degrees, not 40 inches, 40 degrees. And so when I click apply, what that'll do is that'll build up this component so it's sitting right on the top of that flat component there. Uh, and there's going to be some base meat underneath that's kind of merging with that flat component. So we'll let that build up. And you can see here uh, where we're at. Now, I'd actually like it to be a little bit higher. So I'm actually, instead of a quarter, I'm going to give it just a little bit more meat. I want this to be raised up and you'll see why in a moment when I create the draft uh, and everything. So uh, I'm going to go up another eighth of an inch. So we're going to make this instead of uh, 0.25, we're going to go 0.375. Too many decimal points in there, 0.375. And I'm just going to simply click apply. And that should raise this up an eighth of an inch over that flat area there. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, let's answer a couple of questions. Hey, Chris, uh, KRDS from Greece. Uh, welcome all the way from Greece. Cool. Uh, suicide all times. Is there a setting to stop the tool lifting at the end uh, in the beginning of the line when a uh, beginning of the line when doing a 3D finish? Uh, so uh, you're talking about at the end of a beginning of a job and end of the job, uh, the tool raising up before it turns on the spindle and then at the end when it raises up, I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Um, that uh, you can find in your material setup and um, this model needs to be up here, up at the top. Bear with me a second while I slide this model up at the top. There we go. Um, your clearance, but the gap above material, this 0.8, uh, let's get rid of uh, your comment so you can see where I'm pointing to. Uh, in your setup, material setup, the home start position, this is the default distance that the machine, when you hit start, it raises up to this position to safely turn on the spindle or router. And at the end of the job, the very end of the job, it goes back to X, Y, zero and to Z that, that position, that gap above material. Uh, it, I would uh, highly encourage that it rec that you raise some, I don't, don't turn your spindle on where it's touching at the top of the material. Um, but, uh, at least at a minimum, you know, uh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so. I wouldn't have the spindle turning on on top of the material. You get burn spots and stuff. But uh, that's that's where that would be. Um, and uh, the clearance here uh, is where when it's going from one pass to another, when it's going from one location to another, 
Uh, this is the distance that it raises up above the material to safely travel from one place to another above the material. And also your plunge Z gap where it raises up before it plunges into the next area. So, uh, so it's a lot of times you can play around with these two numbers and see which, you know, what, what, what best, uh, uh, works for you there and stuff. Um, you know, uh, you can get rid of those or, or what have you, but, uh, I wouldn't, I mean, I would leave some in there, but again, your machine, your program, you do whatever you please. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, but that's where you'd find those at. So it's at all times. And then, um, uh, how do you determine the degrees? Uh, Blue Knight asked. Well, if we were, uh, let's, um, let's close this for a moment and let's turn off our components here for a second. Turn those off for a second. Uh, hide those. And let me draw a circle for a moment. Uh, we're just going to, I'll just throw a circle right here for a second. When uh, creating the shape on your curved profile or your pointed profile or your undercut concave profile or your smooth profile, um, on these two here, you can set a degree of angle. So if we look at this in the 3D view down here, we come down here and look at this in the 3D view right about here. Um, if I set this to a uh, 10 degree uh, shape height here on that curved profile, uh, let's actually go. I went, uh, I want to go curved, not pointed. Curve, let's click apply. Okay, and let's come down here. Um, ignoring the base height that's underneath because it's got a three inch base height. I'm looking at this here. Uh, let's go ahead and get his uh, comment off the screen. I'm looking at this here on this curve. Oops. Come back up so we can see you. At a 10 degree curve, there's not much of a profile there. Well, let's increase that to a 30 degree curve profile and let's build that profile up at 30 degrees so now we're getting more of a let's zoom in let's see if i can spin this work oh you son of a gun let me look at along the y all right perfect and let's zoom in here zoom 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 Okay, stop right there. All right, so at a 30 degree curve shape, I have a very mild shape here. Uh, if I change this, let's say I go 60 degrees, let's double that and create apply. We're going, to, we're getting more of a curve shape. You can start to see it take shape now. And then of course the maximum we can go is 90 degrees and 90 degree dome, that's just a full on round 90 degree dome, uh, you know, 90 degree arch and all. And so you would basically determine your angle based on the look that you're wanting to get. And for the top of the shapes that I was doing, I wanted a 40 degree kind of a pillow top. So I went with a 40 degree uh, curved shape there. So I get just a nice, subtle curved profile. And uh, if we close this out now, and let's delete this sample component that I just made. And if we come back in and look at our edge components, and I'm gonna look at it uh, down the X axis here for you guys. Uh, with these, I went a full-on 90 degree curved profile, 90 degrees. And my shape height, my base height is all this straight meat underneath here. Um, 
it's all this straight meat. My shape height begins at the top of that base height, and that's my curve profile. So I got a 90 degree curve here. Uh, on my, uh, let's get my center component built back in there. Wonderful. And uh, let's drag this down a little bit and let's bring in the uh, decorative uh, shape here. So on these guys here, uh, let's um, get rid of this base meat by taking this component combine mode and merging it with this. Let's make sure this one is merge as well. And then finally, my edge components, let's merge those also merge. Okay, great. All right, so on this here, and I'm going to reduce my uh, eighth of an inch here, but I've got an eighth of an inch base height, additional base height here, and then I've got my 40 degree little pillow top dome. Um. And uh, I got my 40 degree little pillow top dome here. Uh, I don't want, I, I just want a nice subtle curved top uh, and stuff and everything. So let's go back into a full view and I want to turn this sideways a bit. And I created that uh, eighth of an inch base height here on this trim because I'm going to be doing a draft, a draft angle. But I think I'm going to go back into that component and I think I'm going to reduce it down a small amount um, on the uh, height here. I'm going to uh, minus a sixteenth of an inch off of that. And uh, it used to be in the base height, but when I closed the tool, it put it all into the actual full shape height and everything. There we go. Nice little sixteenth of an inch. All right. So, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, you 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 determine the angle of what you want on your shape. So it just depends on the look you're going for. Uh, so yeah, you're experimenting. Uh, you know, experience, uh, not experience, but experimenting. You know, seeing what looks good because we can change that shape to whatever we want. And when you're happy with it, stick. You know, go with it, kind of thing. So. Uh, and all. And uh, so, so I, when I do a finish pass, it will raise uh, to material Z or safe Z every pass, sometimes one side, sometimes both. Um, yeah, man, just play with those two numbers and all that I, that I showed you, but that's, that's about all that's, that's what controls that. Okay. Um, all right. So now I need to create a draft. Uh, a draft is basically right here on these straight edges coming down on my profile. I want them to come out at a slight angle. Now, when you hear the term draft, you, you know, like when you're pouring concrete, you create a little bit of a draft on your slab and everything. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, it helps like, especially on your stair steps and risers and all, uh, when it comes to, um, uh, pressing, uh, you know, uh, uh, plastic injection moldings, right? Uh, those moldings, those moldings that that plastic injection is getting into, they have a draft added to them uh, so that those parts slip out of that molding and everything. Well, in the case of this, I want to add a draft to the part. So when my router bit is cutting, when my finish bit is cutting, it, it has a little bit of a ramp to come down instead of a straight plunge down. So my drafting tool is here. And the drafting tool uh, creates a draft on the visible model, right? The visible model. And I don't want to create a draft on my edge components or my center components. So I want to make those in invisible right now. Uh, I just want to see my main component here. And I've got my shape and remember it's merged. So it's got all that base height into it. Well, I want to add a draft to it. And in this case, it's going to, I'm going to go with a 22 and a half degree draft angle. I could go 60, 30, whatever the case may be, but uh, 60 and 30 just look, they don't look good in my opinion uh, for, for what I'm creating. You can play around with it, uh, with what you want to create. But um, uh, this is uh, going to create a 22 and a half degree angle draft uh 
coming off those edges and everything. So we'll let that build up. Uh, and um, uh, go from there. Yeah, suicide at all times while this is calculating everything. Um, the raising and lowering, going from one pass to the next, uh, that's going to be your clearance gaps above Z, uh, zero, uh, when you're, when it's moving from one place to another. So as, for general default, I have it set to 0.2 and 0.2. Uh, you can, uh, you know, remove that, but I wouldn't have the bit dragging across the material uh, to go from one line. to the next I would have it raise up uh, 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 a bit try it without it see what it does for you but absolutely if you're uh, uh, you know if you're doing like a v carve or something uh, if if you do not raise that bit up to move from one place to another you're cutting a v groove right across your board so i do not encourage that 3d model cut you you can have it where it doesn't raise up up at the beginning or the end of the line um but uh, i was clear to play with and see what find that in the material and remember, it's because there's a lot of pixels it's got to generate. So you can see uh, that draft angle that was just created, that 22 degree draft angle that was created on these parts uh, and everything. So it's not straight down. Now, most of this, uh, you see this and it kind of looks bulky and everything. Um, but uh, most of this is being hidden because it's merging with the other models. So when I turn on that other component, all this, most of this is going to get buried except for a 16th inch of an inch of this. Uh, and then I got my edge components in here. And, um, you know, uh, we can go there. Now, when it created this model with the draft, it created the, a new model with the draft, right? So that component too, I no longer need that visible. So I can uncheck that because it's recreated that component with the draft so that is now a new component in itself uh so if i turn it off you know it's gone turn it on is there so i don't need this other component check there's no sense in having it still visible and all i wanted was just a subtle 22 degree draft um if i wanted to uh just let's let's show you an extreme let's turn this off because i want to keep this but let's take this other component again that doesn't have the draft here and we'll add a let's go with a 30 degree draft just to give you an idea let's go 30 degrees and uh let's not do that let's uncheck <laughs> these two here uh once again i don't want to create a draft on those two parts <clears throat> okay let's create a 30 degree draft 30 degrees and click apply We'll let that build out. I'll show you that 30 degree draft uh, on this. And then, um, then we'll move on. Yes, the audio uh, is. Is going to cut out. So bear with my audio. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, and uh, it's because I'm having a GPU issue right now.
All right. Move on. And I'm maxed out on uh, high resolution and extreme. Uh, and um, uh, but I'm also having a, a GPU graphics card issue right now. That's why. I've got a new computer on the way. So everything will be lightning fast and I don't get audio issues on top of it all. Let's uh, uh, be patient. And uh, Blue Knight, I'll... Uh, Let's see here. Almost there, guys. Okay. All right. So you can see, and uh, Blue Knight, answer your question. I'm running an AMD A10 5700 APU with Radon, uh, high definition graphics card uh, processor, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so you can see that 30 degree, um, that 30 degree draft there and everything. And if I were to turn on my other components to bury that up, <clears throat> you can see that, uh, you know, that 30 degree draft and everything uh, in there. Now I am going to, let's put our side pieces back on. So yeah, guys, when I'm rendering something heavy like that, uh, Aspire is very CPU intensive uh, and I'm having some, uh, and I'm, I'm having some graphic card issues right now as well. Uh, that's screwing up my audio and stuff. But um, the uh, so with that 30 degree draft, uh, you know, that's that gives it that 30 degree angle and everything uh, that doesn't look bad uh, in itself and everything. But uh, I'm going to uh, let's get rid of that. And uh, I'm going to stick with the 22 and a half degree. So let's uh, put that 22 and a half degree back in there. And I just want a subtle draft draft in there. I don't want to be too extreme. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that 30 degree draft. <clears throat> All right. So let's uh, maximize this up and let's look at our piece of trim uh, that we've created uh, here. Nice little piece of trim, uh, accent trim or whatever that we can uh, cut. And uh, I usually cut multiple sticks of things like this uh, and everything. Uh, and uh, I have it for, you know, different occasions and stuff. Okay. Um, and uh, so we've got, um, this is option number one, right, of our little trim part. Let's go ahead and uh, let's create a, another layer here. 
and uh, we're going to call this option one. And we're going to insert a new level here as well. Uh, we'll call this level one. We'll rename this to option one. So just to show that. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and um, on option one, I want to go ahead and take these two guys right here and I want to copy them. I'm going to hold down the control key and drag them up to that level two. Uh, once they're in there, And go ahead and okay. So uh, I wanted to have those two base components, so I still have my base here, right? My base trim. This is my base trim and stuff. And this could be any profile that you want. I'm just using. Uh, you know, this is a general profile just to give you an idea. And now I have this second graphic here. Let's go ahead and let's move uh, these items here. Uh, let's select these items and deselect uh, these two components here. Let's turn that off. And let's move them to option one layer uh, so that I can turn that visibility off. Okay. And um, let's now come in here and grab this guy. Now, what I do need from option one is I do want this rectangle right here. So I want to make a copy of that rectangle to a new layer. And uh, that way it's on that uh, new layer. And that new layer needs to be named. We'll just call it option two, right? Whatever you want to do, right? Trim option two. And um, that'll drive me nuts. Bear with me a second here. Okay. So uh, with this here, th the reason why I wanted this rectangle is so that I can center this piece um, and widen it up and stuff. Uh, if I take my two components. Uh, currently right now, these two components are on a this um, layer. So if I come in here and everything, uh, I want to be able to see these two components, kind of the grayscales of them, if you will. In here, I want to be able to see this grayscale. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to take this model here and this model here and um let's temporarily move them to option two for the moment so that way when i turn everything off i've still got that gray scale that i can kind of work with and stuff and by the way notice when you click on a gray scale it darkens up and everything uh, and when you're off of it, it lightens up. If you ever need it to stay dark so you can see what you're aligning to and everything, you know, like this grayscale here, right click on the model. This, I don't care what software you're in, uh, go down to object properties and the fading, uh, turn the fading off and it'll just keep it, um, it'll keep it full scale, you know, non-faded and everything when you're uh, working on it and all. Um, but in this, uh, in this case, um, I want to, uh, focus on, you know, this part and get it centered in here and get it sized appropriately. So with that, I'm going to go align up and down to get it centered. And, uh, I, I don't want it going right to the edge like it is here. Uh, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to squish it. I'm going to scale it, keeping the aspect ratio and everything. Uh, and I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit so that, um, I have a little bit of clearance away from my edge. Okay. You guys with it on that? Uh, don't forget to save. Someone says that's a good idea. File save as, 
uh, especially with things going the way they are nowadays. Uh, we're going to just call this uh, trim class. Uh, and today is uh, 10 20 all right let's save that thank you for that reminder darwin appreciate you um ronald's saying how long to cut that trim we'll take a look at that in just a minute ron when we create the toolpath let's finish up the second piece and then we'll look at uh the uh the the cut time on that and everything because it is a 3d model so there it, it is going to take some time but uh we'll take we'll definitely take a look at that here in just a moment uh let this file save and then we'll move on When you create a finished 3D cut, does it show the lifts um, at the left and right uh, at the beginning and the end of a line, basically? And are your settings in the Z safe set to stay at uh, carving level? Uh, my settings are 0.2 and 0.2. We'll look at that when we create a tool pass suicide at all times. Uh, I don't know if it shows the lifts or not, but I'm sure it does. Uh, we'll take a look at that um, in a moment for sure when we look at the toolpath. All right, for this part here, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna go back into my modeling tools uh, and I wanna go into my create shape. Once again, I'm gonna do a curved shape and once again, I'm gonna stick with that 40 degree kind of curved shape. And I'm also going to stick with a three eighth inch base height because it's gonna be merging with that quarter inch thick component that's underneath it. And I want it to, and I don't want three eighths, uh, three eighths, I'm sorry. Uh, I want um, 0.1875, not three eighths. Um, hold on a second, let me see here. Uh, 0.25 plus 0.0625 equals 3125. I knew it was uh, 5 sixteenths, I want, uh, not three eighths. Um, and uh, so uh, on this, again, there's going to be no limit to the curved shape, to that 40 degree shape. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a merge here. And um, I'm just going to call this uh, flourish one, one. And let's click apply. And let's build that up. So when we look at our 3D view here, when we come in, uh, it doesn't look like much now. It will, uh, it'll start to thicken up and things uh, when we add the draft and stuff in there. Uh, so um, uh, we'll get that next. And let's go ahead and um, close out of this here. On this part, on this component here, all I want is that flourish component that I just named flourish. I want it visible. Okay. And uh, we're going to build a draft on it and we're going to have to sit through and this is going to be a 22.5, 22.5 degree draft. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, build that up. draft i just want to show you those two and then we're going to go into the molding toolpath so we'll jump over to vcar pro and aspire in the mold toolpath
Okay, it's moving along. All right. Okay. Let's uh, take a look at this again with that 22 degree draft. It looks uh, all big and bulky and things. Uh, but once we add in our quarter of an inch uh, thick component into it, uh, and then our edge profiles kind of loves out. Now, we haven't done any smoothing or any of that stuff yet. As soon as I create this piece, we're going to smooth it out and you'll see those edges kind of clean up really nicely and stuff in here. Uh, we'll do that on this last piece here uh, in just a moment. But let's go in and let's uh, create a uh, another uh, couple elements. So I'm going to select this component here. And I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to drag out multiple copies. So uh, we're going to go one, two, three. I'm not worried about where I'm dragging them uh, right now. I'm just getting them dragged out. Uh, all right. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's go one more. Eight. Okay. All right, now on this rectangle that I used to create that uh, um, that uh, flat area of my modeling, I'm going to actually use this rectangle again, and I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to drag it back to the end of my model here. Um, and uh, so I hold the shift key so it did it on both sides, because what I want to do now is I want to select all these. Here, let's move these out of the way. I want to select all these inner components here. And I want to select that rectangle last. And I'm going to go into my alignment tool. And I want to center them all up right now. So they're all going to get stacked on top of each other right in the middle. Okay. They're all stacked on top of each other in the middle. And then I want to space inside that last selection horizontally. So it's going to space them uh, equal distance. Now, here's the uh, problem with that. Uh, I had these additional vectors. Uh, I forgot to uh, move those out of the way. Let me turn those and put them up there for right now. Uh, let's delete them. I only need the one. All right, let's do that one more time. Um, and let's get rid of, so I had, let me undo what I just did because I had some additional stuff selected that I did not want selected. So let's do that one more time. Undo the move, undo the align. Okay and uh, undo the align objects. And what uh, the issue that I had was um, that when I came in here, I had all the original flourishes, not the model with the draft, right? I had all these original flourishes selected as well. So let's turn those off. I made copies of all them and we're gonna end up deleting, I'm gonna end up deleting here, let's, uh, matter of fact, let's do that now. Delete them. 
I need my master flourish and then all the model with the drafts. Those are what I want. Uh, as far as the graphics here, I just need one of those. So I can move that up there. Uh, these others, I can go ahead and get rid of them. There we go. Now let's select all of our model parts here. Hold down our shift key, grab that rectangle last, and let's do that one more time. Let's um, not do that. I hit the wrong align button. I need this button right here. And then let's space that out horizontally. There we go. Now we're cooking with some gasoline. All right. Last thing that I want to do to this uh, part here is I want to add a couple of little elements. Uh, so I'm going to take my ellipse tool. Okay. And uh, I'm going to draw a small ellipse here. Oh, I don't know. About like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And then on that copy that I just made, I'm going to hit my um, number nine key twice just to have it turn a little bit. So it creates this shape here, right? Kind of that orbit. Uh, let's select both of those and weld it together. All right. To create that little shape there. And on that, let's go back into our modeling tools. Create shape tool. On this, uh, we're going to, I'm going to stick with the same thing that I have on everything else. We'll call this our little, I don't know, I don't know, four point star or star or whatever, uh, whatever you want to call it. And let's click apply. Okay, and that's going to create, let's zoom in here. Uh, that's going to create this shape that, of course, is overlapping right now. Uh, I want to uh, drag it down a bit. There we go. All right. Now, what I want to do with this, uh, this model part here, is I want to go ahead and... Uh, let me make sure I select let me make sure I select both of these. There we go. Uh, I want to move that up just ever so slightly, probably right about here. Let's look at my other part. Yeah, just right inside that edge. That's good. And I want to mirror this guy. I want to mirror him and I want to create a mirrored copy, flip about the job center. And I want to flip vertically. Okay. All right. Now, on these two little star parts here, uh, currently they're set to an add mode. So let's split that view again. And let's look here, and that part has been added to the component that's underneath it, and I don't want that. I need them to be a merge. I need them to blend with that quarter-inch flat base um, in there. So I want them to merge. Merge. Okay, I want them to be down a bit. There we go. All right. Good. Now, I want, this will make sense here in just a moment. Let's come back over here. On these guys, I want to select them and I want to copy and paste again. So control C, control V, you can right click on your screen and copy, right click and paste. 
that type of deal, you know, uh, however you want to do it. Um, but uh, I want to copy and paste those again. And again, I'm going to hit the number nine key on my keyboard. Uh, and um, I'm going to rotate these two 90 degrees. So one more time. All right. And then what I want to do is I want to select all four of these. And I'm going to now, as one, I'm going to kind of scale them down a bit. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to scale them down a bit. Not much. Just probably right about. Oop. Let's go a little bit. That mouse is sensitive. Hold on a second. Come on down now. Okay. Once I get them into position, now when I scale them down, uh, it is scaled down my Z height and all that stuff. But now I, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm centered on my material. So on my alignment, okay, I want to make sure that that those things are centered up and down. Cool. And uh, I'm going to take and bump them over right about there. That looks good. Okay. Um, again, before I do any copying or pasting at all, I want to add a draft to these four parts here. So coming back into my tools, uh, into my uh, component tree down here, uh, I want to turn off the things that I do not want to create a draft on, right? Uh, so, and I want to keep things separate. So I'm going to turn off my outer edge borders. I'm going to turn off that center tree line. Okay. And I'm going to turn off the, these six parts here. All right, I got two more. And all I want selected or visible, should I say, all I want visible are the four stars. So now I can come back into the draft. And again, I'm going to stick with that 22 and a half degree draft on these. And let's go ahead and create that. Uh, absolutely, you could do that. You could personalize it with your uh, initials in between. Uh, in this case, I'm using the four stars that it's going to go between. Right, because it's CPU heavy, things freeze up and the software says not responding. So you just got to hold out and wait it out. Yeah, we'll talk about that here in a second.
Okay. That was the last heavy rendering that we had. Uh, but uh, let's talk about uh, what Blue Knight said here. Uh, you need to remember how this will look when you place these, uh, you know, one behind another, when you're going end to end. Um, and that's very important. Uh, you want, uh, you know, almost like a seamless pattern. Uh, so, you know, uh, in the case of this, this is a 24 inch piece. We want, if we stuck two 24 inch pieces side by side, that the pattern continues on. Uh, so uh, whatever finishes off on this end would continue on the other end. Like if, for instance, if I cut these stars in half and ran them right down the middle seam here, uh, then, you know, the other half on the end of the seam of the first one, they would come together to make the full star pattern. So keep that in mind uh, when you're when you're running and all. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's turn back on our uh, uh, rest of our components here. And remember what I said, uh, remember what I said about the model with draft. So this is one model now with a draft. So these three stars do not need to be visible any longer. Those are my originals, if you will. These four, should I say, not three, these four. Because this recreated a single model with a draft. And um, let's turn these back on. Okay. All right. Let's turn on our flat component. And our edge. Okay. All right. Let's get this uh, back in the way here. And what I want to do now is uh, quickly go into my drawing tools and I want to grab a line. I want to draw a line. And um, on my line... Um, I want that line to basically span, uh, the entire width of this rectangle here, but I want that line to be on the center of this component here. So what I want to do is to make sure that I'm on the center of this component with the draft and everything is I'm actually going to, uh, in my modeling tabs, I'm going to create a boundary around it. And uh, that way I have this vector boundary outline right here. Uh, on that vector boundary outline, there's a center spot. If I double click on it, we have a center spot that my line now, as long as I have smart snapping and geometry snapping on, I can now take my line and snap to the center of that part. Okay. So, uh, with that, uh, what I want to do is now that I have that line centered on this model, I want to select this component here. Okay. I want to select this line and I want to mirror and I want to flip about that line. Okay. And, uh, it looks like I'm heavy and hitting here and everything, but remember, uh, part of that model is buried underneath. So, um, you know, my model's not even coming anywhere near those flourishes, even though it looks that way in the design up here, that, that 22 and a half degree draft is what's kind of touching, but in my part and all it's not right. Okay. All right. So now one more time on this here, I want to create a vector boundary around that. And then I want to select my line select this here and I can actually just use my alignment tool, right? To align to the center and it'll move that line right to the center. And then I can select this component, select that line. And then my mirror tool, mirror tool, I can flip about that line. And I'm just going to work my way down uh, this piece until they are all the way across. So let's do that uh, quickly here. Uh, let's get this kind of centered in here. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select, hold my shift key down and select all these components right here. 
Uh, I'm going to create a vector boundary around all of them at one time. I'm going to then select those uh, vector boundaries and I'm going to ungroup them. Right. So I have, you know, I'm working with one at a time and let's select my line and this group. And let's go to align to center to get that line over here. Let's select this model, this line and mirror flip about the line. All right. Rinse and repeat. Select this line. Select this boundary. Come into our alignment tool and align to center to get the line over there. Select this model. Select this line. Mirror tool. Flip about the line. Select the line, the boundary. Align to center. Select the model, the line last. And mirror flip about the line working our way down we only got a few more to go select our model and our line mirror flip about the line okay two more times this in our boundary, align it to center. That gets that line on the center of that boundary. Select our model and our line, and we're gonna flip that model, making a mirrored copy. That's the important part. Make sure you got create mirrored copy selected, and we wanna flip about the line. All right, one last time. And mirror, flip about the line. Okay. All right. So now uh, looking at our trim, let's go ahead and get our trim into full view here and everything. And let's go ahead and we can now focus on this part here. Let's turn this a little sideways and kind of zoom in on one of the areas. What I want to do now is um, these are all in my... Uh, component tree here. Uh, these are all on my component tree. Let's see if I can, uh, will it let me drag the component tree out? Uh, I don't think it'll let me pull the component tree out. But uh, in my component tree, these are all my originals, right? Those are all my originals. I want to keep them separate and I want to keep them intact uh, in case I need to change something, in case I want to change my draft, in case I want to change the shape, the individual shape, all of that stuff, I want to keep them individualized, but I want to also smooth everything out uh, in everything uh, before I render this ready to go, kind of create the tool path. So I need to bake them together and I don't want to bake my originals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, these components here and come down here and select these components. These are all my little uh, flourishes there. And then come down here and select these two components. Okay. So I've got all my, you know, uh, original selected and I'm going to insert a new level Okay. And I'm going to just rename this level. This is going to be my baked trim, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, because I'm going to take these, I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to drag, I'm going to drag a copy of these into that new level. <clears throat> Yeah, Blue Knight, we could leave the stars off the other end, the, the two ends for sure. Um, you know, if we were creating this seamless pattern and stuff, absolutely. Or 
uh, you know, at least split them or something. Uh, because if we if we laid this trim end to end on this 24 piece, we end up with two bundles of stars here and not an ornate shape. So, uh, but if we leave the stars off here, um, then we would end up with a, um, you know, a big gap in between the two sections. So what you would do is you would actually, instead of uh, seven of these, you would have eight of them and you would have one half of this at the end, you'd extend your trim out another inch or so, whatever half of this size of this is, and you would have one half on each end. Or cut your trim down to where it's half and half on these ends, and that way it's seamless, right? Cut that half of that those four star group down. Either way. Uh, so now, in here, in my new trimmed or baked trim layer here, while they're still selected, Okay. Um, well, they're selected. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that second level. I'm going to turn off that second level and make sure that everything's off except for these guys here. And I'm going to go ahead and bake, bake, like taking eggs, flour, and water, baking them together into pancake mix or a cake. You know, we're taking all these ingredients and um, baking them into one model. <clears throat> okay. So now I can rename this model. All right, whatever I want to name it. And now let's come in and let's look at this and let's do some smoothing. So let's kind of zoom in here and let's see what the smoothing does for us. On this model here, this baked model, I want to open up my smoothing toolpath or uh, uh, tool. I want to preserve the transparency. And then what I'm watching is these edges here, especially kind of on this large area here. I'm basically just going to slide over literally just a small amount. Let it uh, update this model here. I'm going to slide over probably about to here. To, let's do that a little bit more. All right, so with no smoothing, let me look at this again. Okay, let's go ahead and write about. There we go. Okay. All right, let's close that. Did I click OK or close? Let me find out here. I did not click OK, so always click OK. Um, let's do that one more time. Always click OK before you close. OK, click OK. All right, and so uh, this is the smooth model, right? Um, so on my trim option two here, we don't need that visible anymore because this is the smooth model and uh, a version of that. And so let's uh, zoom out and uh, straighten this up. And so there would be another piece of trim, right? Just as an example, another piece of trim. And so, uh, you know, again, just a, all this is is a, vec uh, a, a flat, uh, you know, accent trim or what have you. Now we'll get into uh, the last uh, little bit of this uh, class. We'll get into the molding toolpath and we'll try to do something similar to that. But I just want to show you uh, those two ways, right? Okay. And uh, let's answer a couple of quick questions before we um, let's hit the save button. While this is saving, we'll answer questions here. File, save. 
And uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Laney, where do you find your flourishes to use and are they free? Thanks. Uh, just uh, Google flourish vectors and uh, you can find free vectors online. You can find vectors that you can buy for a couple dollars a pop off of Etsy and things. Um, uh, there, uh, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, 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 different places, but, uh, just type in flourish vectors on Google and, uh, look and see, you can, uh, you can find a lot there. Um, photo deposit or, um, deposit graphics has them. Um, uh, uh oh Jesus. Um, three hold on what is the other one uh the free one is uh something handyman.com uh hold on a second let me uh give me a second here uh flourish vector I just google it you can uh you can copy and you can save some of those images and trace them uh or there is a uh, vector easy, uh, vect easy, V E C T E E Z Y, vect easy.com. Uh, there's dreams time, there's uh, uh, clip art ix.com, vectorstock.com, vexels. There's all kinds of places and uh, uh, flurry uh, clip art library. Clip art dash library.com is free vectors, free downloads. So there's a lot of places uh, to get them, uh, but I, to find the search, uh, I just type in flourish vectors, flourish vectors. Um, and again, I'd put the stars at the end and leave them off on the other. Would that work? And like I said, if we, if I either shorten this piece by cutting it in half, uh, so I'm at half my stars here. So that way, when two pieces go together, I, I have the other half on that other end of the piece, then it would create that seamless trim. Uh, if we leave them off, we'd have a big gap here. Uh, this is not right now. The way I have it laid out is not a continuous pattern because if we tried to put another piece on the end, I'd have two bundles of stars side by side. So, but this is just an example, guys. Um, if I were to, let's take a moment. Let's turn this off and let's look at another one here. Let's import uh, another piece of my trim uh, um, do, 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 holiday trim one. <clears throat> Let this model come in and we'll, uh, then we'll move on. Bless you. Uh, while that is opening up, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, there it is. All right. So, um, let's zoom in. And on this piece of trim, I zoom in so you can see it. You can see that I have half the stars here. So that when the next piece comes up against it, it's the other half of the stars. Uh, and it's on both ends. And that would be a seamless pattern. So that's what you would want to do. Right? That type of thing. Okay. All right. So let's uh, cancel out of that. And uh, for those of you that uh, are uh, Spindle TV training subscribers, uh, that piece of trim you just saw right there, that's going to be one of two uh, holiday trim pieces that you get with your other models. You're getting six models uh, emailed to you tonight uh, for your August, September, and October projects. All right, let's go ahead and uh, close out of this, uh, and let's go into uh, VCAR Pro. Very, 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 very quickly. B car, Peru. 
All right, let's answer a quick question while that's opening. Um, Laney, is it possible to V-carve some text around the flourishes on the design? Absolutely. If so, how would that be done uh, to have it on uh, have it on curves or around the design? Thanks. Well, uh, when you create your V-carve toolpath, Fred, uh, the main important thing is is to project the V-carve toolpath onto the 3D model. So it follows the curves or around those things and stuff. Uh, let's really quickly here, uh, single-sided job, 24 inches in length. I'm gonna go with a uh, two inch piece as well. Uh, three quarters uh, thick. I'm gonna touch off on the machine bed and the bottom left corner. And um, I'll use a very high resolution here since I'm not building models and we'll click OK. Uh, but uh, let's go over and look at a V-carve toolpath, Fred. Uh, when calculating a toolpath right here, this is the big key thing, is if you have a 3D model that you're having it carved down onto uh, or a part of or anything like that, you need to project that toolpath onto the 3D model so it follows those curves and contours and things like that uh, and stuff. We'll do a little bit of text uh, carving and stuff in here uh, and all when we go. So yeah, so very simple. Now, in this case, we're gonna actually be using, we can't do modeling or we can't build models in VCar Pro or desktop, but we can use the molding toolpath to do similar to the same thing. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a line and I'm gonna do it at the end here my line is going to be a half inch long uh, line here. So I have a line right there, which you can barely see. Uh, I'm going to take that line and I'm going to mirror it. Uh, that was not the right tool. I'm going to mirror that line, creating a mirror copy and flipping it about the job center vertically. So I have a mirror copy down there. So now I have two lines here and here. Right? Okie dokie. Um, and then I'm going to grab a, another line. And I'm going to snap to the center of this line. I can see that center point by the way that little square box. I wish I could zoom in to show you that mouse. Uh, it's got that little square box right in the middle of that crosshair. That's the snapping to the center of that line. And then I'm going to snap to the center of this line. Space bar to finish. So now I've got three separate lines here uh, for three different pieces of molding that I'm going to create. Uh, this first piece of molding, uh, we're going to uh, create a rectangle. And um, this uh, is going to this... Uh, molding piece of trim here uh, this piece of molding is going to be a half inch wide <clears throat> excuse me and it's going to be uh, 0.25 inches tall and that was five inches it needs to be half inch wide there we go uh, 0.25 inches tall great actually three eighths not half inch let's go three eighths i remember i need to do three eighths Let's uncheck that 0.375. There we go. Uh, on this, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to right click on this line and I'm going to turn that to an arc. That'll give me my full 90 degree dome there, right? Think of it in that aspect, right? Uh, and I want to delete this bottom span. So all I need is this profile here. Okay. All right, cool. Now that uh, profile, uh, I'm gonna open up my molding toolpath. Okay, on my molding toolpath, and I'm gonna use a tapered ball nose bit. In this case, uh, for this toolpath, I'll use an eighth inch tapered ball nose, uh, which I've got there, great. And uh, what I wanna do is this is my, this line up here is the path that I wanna follow. This is the shape that I want to follow that path. Now, notice that it's only a half inch wide, right? 
And notice it only went to here. That's because I didn't draw this shape correctly or I didn't draw my line that the path is following correctly. One of the two, let's figure out which one it is and see which one gets that this shape stretched all the way across this end. So uh, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to take a line and I'm going to draw it from one end to the other on this side. Let me, uh, there we go. Perfect. And let's look at that molding toolpath again with this line and then this profile. And you can see there, that's what I want. I want it running the full length and the profile is only three eighths an inch wide. So that's kind of represented by these lines here. Okay, so I want them going in that direction. If I had them go in the opposite direction, if I reverse that direction, then they would be going off the board, right? I don't want that. I want to go on the board. So if we calculate this tool path, uh, let's see, it was not created. Check whether there's enough space to fit the entire profile across the rail contour without overlapping itself. So it's saying that there's a, a bit of an overlapping on itself. Let's All right, let's rotate this. Rotate, 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 George. Oh, we got to close this tool. It won't let you, that tool is a very controlling tool. It won't let you do anything um, without uh, rotating. All right, one more time. Let's select this drive rail here and let's select this part. And let's calculate that. Okay. And if we come in here and look at our part, let's make sure that it created the right, correct path. Uh, let's look at it down the X. Come in here. And you can see that it's created this curve here. But... Ah, uh, that's not quite right. Let's look at it. Let's preview it and let's see here. Uh, so all it's done is, let's turn off the color. Let's look at our material color here. All it's done is created that little curve, right? Uh, so that's not the shape that I want. I want that contour shape. So let's get her, let's get her correct here. Um, oh. That was the leaky. We don't want to do that. Uh, let's rotate this the other direction. One of these is the correct direction. We'll get it here in just a moment. Uh, let's open up that swept profile. And it should go this way. That should be correct. Let's calculate that. Let's look here. <laughs> Why are you going to mess with me today, dude? All right, let's see here. This is, it's screwing with me here. Hold on a second. Uh, let's go. Oops, dang, I keep hitting that delete key. Or that uh, wrong key here. Okay, don't screw with me now. This is my path. This is the profile shape that I want. Let's do this. Let's actually, uh, this is a two inch wide piece. No problem. Let's go ahead and uh, let's control C, control V. I'm going to play this the way it wants to play it. Uh, and we're going to move that copy that I just made. We're going to move it over on the Y axis two inches relative to its current direction. There we go. And then we're going to take these two profiles and we're going to join them together with a straight line. Join with a straight line. That's the profile that I want currently right now on this part. Okay. So this is the piece that I want. Now, 
Uh, I am going to rotate that because I want this. Oh, that was stupid. Uh, I'm going to rotate that because I want this path to follow along here. All right, one more time. Let's see if it screws with me. We want to select this vector here. Let's go into the swept profile. Select this vector here with this last. All right, it's still only creating a short line. Those lines should be running the entire length, these red lines here. So that is not the correct tool. Um, so let's come back over to here. It doesn't like that tool. And let's see if it likes this line. Let's find out. Select this line. Let's open up the swept profile. One of these is uh, the combination. And here, aha. Make sure that is one vector, one open vector it is. Uh, let's rotate this back. This thing does not like me today on VCAR. I'm in there. All right, that profile, let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's not the right path. Let's grab this one and let's see what this looks like. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, Junior. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's make sure that this is two inches wide. It's got to be two inches wide. It's not two inches wide. It's two and three eighths. So let's uh, go to note editing. I found the correct pattern. Now I've just got to get through it. Uh, let's cut the vector here. Let's move this guy over three eighths of an inch. Move him relative negative three eighths of an inch, negative 0.375. Come over here. Take my scissor tool and trim this away. Select that. That should be one closed vector, one or open vector. Sorry. All right. Let's do this one more time. This is my path. This is the profile that I want to follow that path. Very good. Let's calculate that. That's the look that I'm going for. That's the shape that I wanted. Let's reset this preview and preview that selected toolpath. Now we're getting somewhere, George. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So had me draw out the entire profile. Now notice it only came to here because it's, you know, my ball nose bit. It's, I, I'm not giving it any allowance to go down that other side to create that proper rounded edge and everything there uh, because I am not uh, allowing it to um, step beyond uh, this part here. Uh, in order to be able to do that, my material has to be, because you know I'm running to the edge here, my material has to be slightly larger uh, and I, my, my profile's got to be kind of centered within there. So let's go back into my size here. And on this, um, on this, let's close this uh, tool here for a minute. Uh, let's see, I'm using an eighth inch tapered ball nose. Uh, let's go two and a half. And a half inches wide. Okay, calculate. Okay, and uh, let's uh, move this line up, up a quarter. 0.25. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, look at our molding tool path. And I should be centered in that molding toolpath. Very good. Uh, let's calculate that. Now I want to skip. I'm actually going to skip the flat regions because I'm going to do that with a pocket. Uh, you know, pretty much do that with a pocket, uh, that middle flat region. There's no sense in my ball nose bit having to do all of that uh, and everything. So uh, let's select a flat area clearance tool. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. 
along with my tapered ball nose. My ball nose is just going to handle the two upper edges here uh, on the edges and all. And uh, I'm going to have that flat end mill machine those flat regions and stuff instead of the ball nose doing it. Uh, machining allowance, uh, allowance, allowing it to go past. Uh, we can go ahead and um, let's leave. Uh, that's the difference between the flat and the finish. Let's go with a 0 0.04. 0 0.04. And uh, let's calculate that tool path. Okay. All right. Now, my tool path is only showing this arch here it's still not coming down the full side on that tool path but let's preview it and let's see what we got here there's my flat region getting milled out with the end mill when you bake fred uh, while this is milling out when you bake components uh you can only edit the the size you can sculpt it a little bit you know you can edit the size and shape and everything. But if I wanted to make a change in one of those little little stars or one of those little flourishes or something, I have to edit the independent component. I can't edit it once it's baked in with the rest. You know, so I can't pull out the egg once I bake the cake. You know what I mean? Uh, kind of deal. All right. So we got our flat region done. That's our clearing. Let's look at this profile. This is going to be the important part here. Still, still not getting that outer profile. It is cutting that outer profile down to here, almost like it's wanting me to trim off those edges of the trim. You know? That's going to drive me nuts. I don't know what to do about that one uh, because my part runs all the way to the bottom. Um, let's uh, let's let's see here. Out of my three quarter inch piece of wood, let's go three quarter inches in height, uh, two inches wide. Okay, let's get these two here uh, centered up with one another. Okay, uh, let's do some trimming. Let's uh, trim this away, trim that away, that away, and um, uh, let's... <clears throat> trim that and that there we go and then in node editing let's delete this lower span here delete this span so now i've got my three quarter inch parts here okay let's do that one more time on that swept profile let's select this profile here and let's calculate that And it's still not doing it. So that might be a limitation on the molding toolpath. It's still not getting over. It's only letting me go so far. Um, so that's a shame. Uh, that's okay. I mean, I can trim it down and I still have my same round over. I can trim, run it through the table saw and trim off those two edges. But um, yeah, that's... Uh, I want to look, I'm going to open up that trim tool path uh, very closely and take a look at it and make sure there's something that's uh, not checked, but we got to move on past this, but that's a shame that it won't let me go past. Let's see what we got here. Um, three quarters of an inch. Uh, we've got a large area clearance tool, machine the flat region. Um Use automatic boundary offset. Uh, that wasn't checked. Sharp corners, nothing to do with sharp corners there. So there's nothing saying that, um, you know, 
why my bit isn't allowed to cut down that side. It's only stopping me there. So that means I would have to take this part. It's not a big deal. Run it through a table saw and trim off those two edges or do a profile cut. Do a profile cut. Uh, let's take this line here and let's mirror that line flip horizontally, flip vertically, mirror that line there. Let's take both of these lines here. Uh, let's close this tool and uh, let's stretch them out. Hold that shift key down and come here uh, and do a profile tool path on the outside of the line. Uh, quarter inch end mill, three quarters of an inch cut. Let's calculate that. Uh, the vectors selected contain groups or multiple open contours. What do I have selected here? Just these two lines, right? Calculate. Okay, let's make sure I'm on the correct side of the line. I'm on the wrong side of the line. So I need to go on the inside of the line. This one's on the outside. That's on the correct side. This one's on the wrong side. So what I need to do is... Uh, change my start point here. Uh, -bum -bum. Let's close this tool. Both my start points are there. Cutting on the outside of the line. All right, this one's got to be over here. So node editing mode. <clears throat> That's already a start point. Uh, what about this one? That's a start point. We need to make this the start point. There we go. Okay. Now, one more time. This one's fighting me every step of the way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's calculate the tool path. Let's look at our tool path here and let's make sure. All right. So all I got to do here is... On that profile, we're cutting on the inside left of the line now. Inside left of the line. There we go. If I look at the solid view, we're cutting on the right side of the line. Very good. Let's preview that tool pass. So we had to change the cut direction. So we're cutting on the inside of the line on uh, this side, which is the inside is the inside left. Um, and uh, yeah. All right, let's preview that cut, preview that selected tool path. Okay. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is that lip right there. So I'm going to have to create an allowance. This is fighting me every step of the way. Uh, let's go in here. And on our offset allowance, we're going to go... Uh, 0.0625. That might be a little much. Let's find out. Let's calculate that tool path and preview that visible tool path. And let's see here. Uh, that was the wrong. <laughs> Got in too much of a hurry, Laney. Let's min a minus sign. It's got to be a negative sign. I want to cross over the line. So it's a negative offset. All right, let's preview that and see if that takes away that little arch. Mm. Took away the arch, but it also cut away half my trim. So I don't know if I'm happy with that or not. Um, but I guess I got to live with it. Let's move on. Uh, it's one of the sacrifices that we have to make. Uh, so at least I got my center area and all that stuff. Um, I really wish that was a full bead. Uh, let's do this one last thing here. Let's go into here and let's do a 30 second, uh, negative 0 0.03125. Let's calculate that tool path. Reset the preview, preview all the tool paths. Let's see if we can get that somewhat of a round over. Um, all right. Laney, if you make the components, uh, let's see here. When you cut any of the pieces, when you cut any of the pieces you have shown, how do you hold down the material? 
Uh, well, I mean, uh, my material, I could have it a little longer, right? So I could put clamps on the end. Uh, when I'm doing trim like this, uh, it's only a two inch strip, 24 inches long. Uh, so um, I use double sided tape, right? You can use double sided tape, hot glue, uh, tape and painters, uh, painters tape and CA glue. Uh, or you can make your board a little bit wider and a little bit longer. Uh, so you can put clamps on it and then you'll just do a profile cut to cut the board out of there with tabs, right? Uh, but I don't deal with all that. I use two-sided tape to hold my board on there to cut those strips. All right, so uh, that gave me a little bit more of an arch there by going just a 32nd. Uh, and um, I'm going to have to uh, live with that. Now, uh, here's the deal. On this part here, uh, if we look closely down, down, let's get rid of these questions here. Uh, if we look closely, when I hover my mouse down here, right, um, I am at, you know, the top of my material in my case is three quarters, 0.75. If you look at the bottom down here, these numbers, top of my material is three quarters of an inch. When I come down to this flat region, I'm about 0.3125, okay? So 0.3125, basically 5 sixteenths down, if you will, right? And if we were, uh, in my case, uh, doing the math, uh, basically that depth of cut right there is, um, oh my God, do it in your head, Laney. Can't do it in my head. I got to do it with a calculator. Uh, point, uh, let's see here. Come on now. Work with me. 0. 0.75 minus 0.3125 should be it should be 11 sixteenths um, or 7 16. Is it 7 sixteenths? Yeah. So that's my depth of cut right there. That's that depth. That's how far down that is right there uh, because that's what it is. Uh, if the top of my board was zero and I was coming down 0. 0.43 then I would have 3125 left. So I got to do it backwards. Um, 0.3125, that is 5 sixteenths, right? So 6 sixteenths minus 5 sixteenths is 11 sixteenths. Um, but that says 7 sixteenths. How's that math right? Wait a minute, why is that screwing with my head? Why? How is that math right? If my... If my top of my material is three quarters of an inch, 0.75, and this flat region is 0.3125. Oh, it's 0.3125, not 0325. Um, no, wait, 3125. That's 5 sixteenths. 0.3125 is 5 sixteenths. So three quarters minus 0 0.3125, 5 sixteenths, should come to 11 sixteenths, and 0.4375 is 7 sixteenths. In my math, it is. Is it not? 0 0.7, 3 eighths is half. Hold on, 3 eighths is half. Uh, 5 eighths, 3 eighths is 0 0.375. Yeah, 7 sixteenths. What's the math on that one? All right, somebody throw, somebody help me out in the chat room. Tell me what I'm missing. All right. I subscribed on YouTube, Laney. So does that mean I get the files or do I have a link for a beginning member somewhere for me? Thanks, Fred. Uh, Fred, uh, these, uh, what I was talking about for the files is uh, the, um, it's not for subscribers to the channel. It's ones that actually pay for training, one-on-one -on -one training, $112 a year or $10 a month subscription training um, is what I was referring to on that. They get uh, two free project downloads each month, uh, those uh, subscribers that pay for one-on-one -on -one training. $10 a month gets you two projects a month or uh, $110 a year. And you would find that at digitalwoodcarver.com under the learn to carve one-on-one -on -one training page. Somebody help me out there. Seven sixteenths is 
Right. Seven sixteenths is point four three seven five. Seven sixteenths plus five sixteenths is twelve sixteenths. So that's three quarters. Okay, the math is right. <laughs> Because I'm subtracting from three quarters, not one inch. You dumb a laney. Yes. Okay. Now that makes sense. Holy cow. I'm like, wait a minute. All day long, that doesn't make sense. But it's three quarters, not one inch. One inch minus five sixteenths is 11 sixteenths, right? But three quarters minus five sixteenths is seven sixteenths. Thank you so much. Blue Knight, Todd, and Bruce. Five plus seven equals 12. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that one. All right. So uh, let's go into our clip art. Let's move on. Man, that was driving me nuts. But it makes total sense now because I'm subtracting from three quarters, not one inch. I told you guys my mental capacity is drained. This, these, these days off are going to be great. All right. Let's go into our clip art here. And let's throw some clip art in here. Now, uh, I can V-carve in here if I wanted to and all, but I can't really create that raised 3D model like I did, uh, you know, with those flourishes and stuff uh, inside the molding toolpath. But what I can do is I can find 3D models of different flourishes and things if I have them uh, available to me that I can uh, work with, right? That, uh, you know... I can work with to create some decorative trim in things, right? So in this case, uh, as an example, let's work with, um, heck, the seashells would be fine. The floor to leaf would be fine. Uh, let's go with, let's go with this guy right here. Okay, let's drag and drop him on here. And let's get him sized down. Man, that was driving me nuts, guys. You don't know how stupid I feel that I was subtracting from three quarters, not one inch. But in my head, I was subtracting from one inch. <laughs> I was like, gosh, almighty, that's insane. Now, this model, what's important uh, on this model here, uh, when I create these all the way across, is that the model position in the material, this is my little model right here, uh, this little flourish guy right here. What's important is that he is carving in the correct place, right? Uh, so it's, it's, it's important that he's carving in the correct place uh, in here. And what's also mutually important is that I... Uh, don't want to mill the material away for him when I'm creating that, uh, you know, this cut. So what I've got to do is I've got to account for my model's material, right? My model's material. I got to account for it in here. If that's my finished cut, and my models are going to be sitting right here on the top. I've got to account for that because the molding toolpath is going to cut all of this away uh, and my model sitting in here somewhere, right? So what we've got to do is look at my model and currently this is the size that I want it. So if I look at my model's height, my model thickness, it is currently 0 0.0878. That's how thick the model is, okay? 0.0878. All right. So I've got to take that in account on my profile trim here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into no, uh, node editing mode. And I'm going to cut the vector right here and right here on the corner. And I'm going to move this line up the thickness of my model. And again, my model thickness was 0 0.0878, okay, 0 0.0878. So I want to move this line relative to its current position up on the Y. That's a positive number, 0 0.0878. Might go a little bit more. Let's go a little more, 0 0.0878. Let's go 0 0.088. Right, zero eighty. Let's do that. 
give ourselves a little bit of breathing room on our model. We're going to click apply. Okay. Cool beans. Uh, in here, we're going to trim over this access, and this is going to create this new molding trim. So what I have to do, what's important for me is that on my sweat profile here, my sweat profile, I need to make sure that I recalculate the tool path uh, for that part. And uh, let's shorten this line up real quick. Boy, that, this toolpath is demanding. It needs to be closed before I can do anything with this. All right, hold down that shift key. And God, I feel so stupid. That was funny. Um, and let's get that zero back in there. Okay, good enough. All right, on that swept profile, it's very important that I come in here and recalculate that toolpath. Okay. Because when that uh, toolpath cuts, you know, um, and everything, uh, it's going to mill this lower part out here just to get it started. But the rest of it, the rest of the depth that I want to cut is going to get milled out by my model. Now, notice how uh, it cut down here. Let's make sure that on that swept profile that I am at the top of my game here. I am good. Okay. And now, on this guy, let's copy him across. I'm going to double-click on him. Close that molding toolpath again, Lord of mercy. I'm going to hold down that control key. Man, I wish they had, like, if I could make a copy and go X5, enter, and it makes five copies all the way across, uh, like um, SketchUp does. When I drag in one over, that would be great. Uh, but that's okay. We'll end up dragging these independently. Hey, Chris Crosscraft. What's happening here? We're almost done, guys. We're going to wrap up here in about uh, 15 minutes or so. And we'll look at um, run times on these and stuff just to give you an idea. All right, let's go... Now on this one, to be able to do any kind of decorative design in between the parts or anything, I'd have to use some existing models or components or things. Uh, unfortunately, I do, uh, you know, um, I don't have the opportunity to build anything in here. So I got to use the uh, existing parts and stuff. All right. What do I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Very good. All right. So I'm going to draw a rectangle snap to the ends here so that I can select these models. Hold down that shift key. Select all these components. Select that rectangle that I just drew last. We're going to go to our alignment tool. Align to the center. They're going to stack on top of each other in the center of that rectangle. And then we're going to space equal distance horizontally. All right. Cool beans. All right. On that uh, tool path there, that modeling, mold, modeling tool path and all, I'm going to use this same rectangle here as my boundary. Uh, and all, but I am going to let, I'm going to actually expand it out just a little bit. I'm going to let my bit go past the board just a little bit, uh, not much, but when I create that 3d rough and 3d finish cut, we'll do a rough cut first, uh, quarter inch end mill. Uh, we're going to use the selected vector as the boundary, the selected vector. Let's close uh, this tool so we can kind of maximize this up for you guys. We're going to use the selected vector as the boundary, and we are going to raster along the x-axis and calculate that 3D model cut. Yep, copy array. Uh, Chris Crosscraft says um, uh, copy array, uh, you know, uh, knocks it out quick, so we could have done that as well. 
Uh, Blue Knight, what is a demo license? I am an OEM for Vetrix, so I own all the Vetrix software, Cut3D, VCar Pro, VCar Desktop, VCar, or Vetrix Aspire, uh, because I teach all of their software and everything. So as OEMs, we are demoers. We are teachers of their software to people like you guys on here on Spindle TV and everything. So that is what a demo license is. It's for OEMs, uh, vendors that sell uh, and train and teach the Vetric software. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, preview that visible uh, toolpath. Okay, that selected vector for some reason is not. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Stop that. Stop, you goofball. Uh, I saw that three times when I was in this uh, job here, right? This needs to be at the top of the material, uh, but it needs to be down at the appropriate, appropriate height, right? Uh, it needs to be down at the appropriate height. And I was all the way down to the bottom. So it was milling all that stuff away. Um, it needs to be down at the appropriate height here. And um, the uh, appropriate height here is going to be, uh, let me do some math. The gap above the model is going to be, uh, for me, uh, it is, 0.4375 minus 0 0.0878 equals. All right, that should be the appropriate height right there. Let's go ahead and click OK and calculate that one more time. E just this one. I want to recalculate this. Okay. Um, I need to, it's carving that model. And what was happening in this preview five minutes ago is it was, um, it was cutting all the way down uh, in that uh, material. Let's go back into our preview here uh, and let's reset that preview. It was cutting all the way down uh, in that material. And also it's cutting over too wide. So I've got some kind of offset allowance uh, that is uh, uh, cutting it way too wide uh, on that rough cut. This is the rough cut, right? It's just hogging away that waste material. It's not doing any of the finish work. But let's figure out why my rough cut, what kind of, I have no boundary offset here. Uh, these are my models here. Um, that router bit should be, uh, using the selected vector as the boundary should be cutting within that selected vector. Uh, let's calculate that again. Oh, 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 I know why it's cutting it off. Um, I'm an idiot. This is where my profile's starting and I've got my three eighths of an inch uh, you know, roundovers here. I was wondering why is it cutting those off? Uh, I, I'm using, I had my vectors all wrong, guys. Uh, give me just a second. Um, let's, uh, what's going to be the best way to do this? Let's select all of these and size them down. Uh, I need to remove three eighths and three eighths is three quarters. So minus <clears throat> there we go. And uh, let me go ahead and select them. Uh, 
Oh, let's select these four. Come on now. You can do it, Laney. You can do it. Don't screw up now. All right. Hold that control key down. Let's drag off another set of four. <clears throat> all right. Let that build them. And all right, let's select all of these. Let's select my rectangle here. Uh, we are going to align to the center of that rectangle. And then we're going to space equal distance. Wonderful. All right. Now we got to make a change here. My model's height, since I scaled it down, is now 0.05. Let's give that model a little bit of thickness. Let's give it a little bit more shape height uh, here, which I can do that in the modeling toolpath. Let's go into our properties. Let's give that a little bit more shape height. Uh, let's stick it up. Um, okay. An eighth of an inch. Let's uh, smooth it out. There's my originals getting baked together. Uh, let's not do that. Let's just do, let's keep things consistent with what we did in the other program. Insert a new level. Select all of these. Hold down the control key and copy them into that new level. Turn off our first level, and now these can be baked together when we smooth them. So let's smooth those out and click yes to bake them. Okay, that way my originals are still intact. Okay, let's turn down that smoothing way down. Okay. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Let's do this. Let's fix this up here. My profile. This is my three quarter inch board. Okay. We're going to do some math here. We're going to measure vertically because I screwed this whole class up on this one. From the here down to here, my height is 0.349. Okay. Um, and, uh, that's where I'm at. So my, when that gets cut, it's going to get cut down an additional, uh, 0.1204 because my model is going to get cut in here unless I raise this up an additional 0.124. So once again, one more time, I'm going to go into node editing. I'm going to cut this vector. And this vector here, I'm going to move this up, <clears throat> move it up. That's the size we want to move relative to its current position up on the Y. I want to move 0.1204, the size of my model. And so I'm going to go 0.125. Okay. 0.125. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim this away. Okay. Now, this is going to be the profile for the molding tool path. And then the rest of this inside area here, another eighth of an inch is going to get cut out by the molding tool path or the modeling tool path. So this is my three quarter inch material. Okay. My model is 0.1204 inches thick. I'm already down. I'm already down. Uh, let's measure this again because that's where this gap above the material needs to be. Um, from the top to here is 0.224. That's my gap above material, 0.224. Okay. 
Click OK. Wonderful. Quit screwing up, Lenny. You're making it confusing. Here we go. Click OK. On my sweat profile, this and this, we're going to calculate the toolpath. Great. On my 3D rough cut, pretty rough cut. I'm going to use my selected vector as the boundary for these 3D models here. I'm uh, going to use a quarter inch end mill. This boundary needs to be resized on its height here. I want to resize this and I'm going to unscale this or uncheck this and I'm going to go uh, minus uh, three quarters, 0.75 equals, oh, you son of a gun, two inches. Minus 0.75 is one and a quarter. Laney, do the math in your head. Okay, there we go. That selected vector is the boundary for my 3D model. Okay, the 3D model cut. That's going to be the boundary. So uh, let's, um, with that selected vector selected, let's calculate this toolpath. Shoo, my goodness. And, Taking forever to get to the where we need to get let need to be. Thanks, Harvey. Um, all right, awesome. Let's go ahead and let's preview the toolpath for the swept profile. Let's come in here and let's go down the end view here and let's tilt it like this a bit so we can see. Preview the visible toolpaths. So my sweat profile is going to uh, rough out with my end mill and then it's going to take my ball nose bit and round it over. Okay. Now my 3D rough cut, cut right down that bead. You booger. That 3D rough cut, cut right down that middle of that bead. Now, let me go into the swept profile here, uh, the clearing area. I'll turn that off. My molding toolpath is coming right to here. My 3D rough cut... Is cutting right beyond here, half the bit for some odd reason. I have no offset allowance, boundary offset. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make an offset. It's going to be a positive number. I believe it's going to be positive with a 3D model. It might be negative, but we're going to go positive. Uh, half of my bit is uh, 0.125. And let's calculate that again. Okay, that needs to, does need to be a negative number. Wow, okay. Negative 0.125. I'm watching these blue lines right here. That's the important part. It needs, they need to be inside this curved toolpath here. There we go. Hallelujah. All right. Let's, uh, Reset our preview and preview the visible tool pass. Lord of mercy. One piece of trim. Okay, there's my arches. Good. And this 3D rough may not cut into those arches. All right. Let's create a 3D finish cut. 3D finish cut. 
Selected vector is the boundary. Offset to uh, raster. Want to raster along the x-axis. I'm using a eighth inch. Uh, is this an eighth inch or a sixteenth? Um, sixteenth inch degree. Sixteenth degree. Let's go eighth inch tapered ball nose. Calculate. Probably need a sixteenth on these small details and stuff, but let's calculate it with an eighth and see where we get. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let's come in here and let's look. Make sure that toolpath is staying in the middle there. It should preview the selected toolpath. Cut right down the ding, right down that arch. And it's going to cut right into this one. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, that hurts my heart so badly. That hurts my heart. This is a very plain trim. It needs some dressing up in there. But uh, on my 3D finish cut, my boundary offset, let's step off that boundary again, negative 0.125. Calculate it one more time. Oh. Why are you being so difficult? Okay, reset the preview and preview this toolpath and this toolpath. This toolpath and that toolpath. Preview the visible tool pass. All right, here is our swept profile flat area clearance, followed by the ball nose bit rounding over those edges, followed by a 3D finish cut. The rough cut didn't actually do a whole lot, so we can uh, eliminate it. My uh, resolution and my preview for time's sake is turned down real low so it looks real pixelated. Okay. So, in order for my ball nose, notice, uh, notice here that we've got this lip. Let's look at it down the x-axis. Um, uh, zoom in right here. Notice how we have this lip here uh, where the ball nose... If I go any further, um, you know, I, I, I take a chance of cutting into this, you know, and everything. But what I want to do is I, I'm going to uh, cut this in half and make it a 16th instead of an eighth. And let's see if it gets me closer to my edge without cutting into it or what. And this is a very basic plane. It doesn't have a whole lot of character to it and all, but at least gives you an idea. Uh, and then uh, let's preview that selected toolpath. Let's see here. There we go. So the 16th was that we needed to go a 16th instead of an eighth. And that should cut right up to the edge of that arch, not into it. There we go. All right. And then the last cut would be our profile toolpath, um, which would uh, cut out those. Um, oops. Profile cut, which would, uh, you son of a gun, I did it. That's twice I've done it now. 
One more time, Lynn. Profile cut preview the selected tool by selected means it's selected. Um, we cut off those ends. Probably have the profile cut step away a little bit, but uh, regardless, uh, I'm in a very low pixelation preview, so uh, it's um, it's kind of pixelated. A sixteenth of an inch versus the eighth would give us better detail on the 3D finish. So let's finish up with that 3D finish cut. Uh, we're going to go with a 16th of an inch. Let's calculate that one more time. And you guys hopefully get the idea with all those screw ups. Laney, I'll just go to Lowe's. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Lowe's has got some trim there. Um, but uh, now this is just flat trim. Uh, but moldings, profiles, crown moldings, arched moldings, uh, all of those things, uh, you know, we can use the molding toolpath to uh, create uh, in things uh, in all. Uh, but your own little decorative elements on a flat accent trim or something. You know, this would be a, a way to go without all the screw ups. Uh, the molding toolpath has its limitations, um, which we've seen. Uh, getting the right um, profile drawn and the right contour uh, or path for it to follow. And then, of course, it still doesn't allow it to cut all the way down on the other side. Uh, let's see if uh, 16th of an inch tapered ball nose will go in and clean up a little bit of that detail. Um, so a 16th is uh, getting in there and cleaning up a little bit of that detail. So that would be the bit to use. Okay. And, um, you know, we have that uh, trim. Uh, these sides are a little too high. I'd like them to be a little bit more shallow uh, to be, you know, right around just slightly over the top of the uh, centerpiece. Uh, they're sticking out too much. Uh, but, um, you know, let's uh, take one last look at let's go uh i'm just gonna go 24 by 24 right now just for a moment and um <clears throat> let's go here to here let's go here I'm going to draw a rectangle and we're going to go with a three quarter inch wide trim uh, that is 0.625 inches tall here. Uh, let's go with a one inch wide trim. Let's go one inch wide on that. We're going to go into node editing mode. This is the last one here. Go into node editing, and we're going to uh, delete this lower span. We only need that lower span. Uh, let's drag this down here. Let's turn this into a Bezier curve, and let's pull this back here a little bit and pull this something about like that. Let's take a uh, circle here, and let's kind of draw a circle. Now, one of the things that we've got to be mindful of when we are working with a circle is that we don't create an undercut. That router bit has to be able to come down and cut this cove that we're about to create here. Uh, this cove right here. Okay. And uh, let's put a bead at the top. About, about there, and let's put a bead up top here. Okay, and let's uh, go into node editing mode, and let's 
step, let's add a node right here, insert a point. Uh, let's pull this down and pull this back to right about there and make this a line, a straight line. So we have just this little bit of a profile shape. Okay. All right. So with that path in our molding tool path, as an example here, uh, on our molding tool path, let's select this guy here, hold down our shift key and select this guy here. And let's calculate this tool path. And let's preview this tool path. Okay, uh, on that uh, swept profile here and here, uh, we are going to create a, on this arch, I'm gonna hold down the control key and drag a copy down to here, go into node editing mode and I'm going to drag that to here. Let's snap it to here, somewhere around there. Let's grab this one over here and snap it to there. Let's pull this little bit there all right let's take these two uh vectors here and let's join them let's select them let's get oops don't do that control z to undo that uh let's select these two vectors here and join them with a straight line on both ends and let's run a profile cut uh quarter inch end mill we want to be on the outside of the line Calculate that toolpath. Was I in a, uh, let's turn this off and this off. Profile cut outside the line. Yep. Okay. Just making sure. Let's calculate that toolpath or preview that cut. Okay. Now on that cut, we need to uh, allow it to come in just a little bit more on this uh, this side here and all and a little bit more on this side so we're going to do an offset allowance offset allowance of a negative number to go over the line and we're going to go um, let's start with a 30 second and let's sneak up on it Calculate that toolpath. Little bit more, little bit more. Let's go another 30 seconds. So that'll be a 16th of an inch. Oh, so close. One more time. One more time. Oh, what would my magic number be? Let's go 0 0.0875. Let's go 0 0.0875. Oh, you son of a gun. All right, this would be cleaned up if I, um, my line, let's look at my swept profile here. I'm pretty close there. All right, last time, 0875, let's go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 9, 2. Where am I getting these numbers from? I'm just randomly selecting them. Um, 
negative 09275. No toolpath generated for current parameters. Check the tool can fit. What's changed? Oh, uh, it's supposed to be 090275. Calculate. There we go. Preview that selected toolpath. All right, it's getting there. But so long story short, you know, your molding toolpath can do let it regenerate. You're going to regenerate. Uh, let's turn this up. One, two, three. Preview the visible toolpaths. So with the molding toolpath, it doesn't have to be just the flat dental type molding that we do, that we were made in Aspire and at the beginning of this. Um, all we have to do is uh, at least be able to... Uh, uh, create a shape and and with a molding tool path we can create all different types of arch molding s shape molding it could be a uh, trim crown uh, really anything uh, with the vetric software we can model uh, our molding a little bit more freely to kind of really get uh, creative with it with just using vectors and stuff uh, and things but uh, we can really do some you know, uh, pretty cool things with, uh, you know, uh, with trim and stuff uh, with the molding tool pass. No matter what the, the object is, uh, you might be doing a clock face and you might need a round piece of trim that has some kind of decorative molding on it that you can just cut right out and pop it right on, you know, that clock face or whatever the case may be. Uh, so various projects and all. I personally... Uh, I like to be able to model my, 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 uh, tool pass or my, my moldings and everything a little bit more freely. Uh, the only thing is, is it changes dynamically how much the cut time is, uh, to give you an idea on cut time, uh, just this, uh, simple, uh, swept profile tool path that we did here a, uh, minute ago, the straight one that, uh, that straight dental one that 24 inch and everything uh you know it's five hours right for that uh the arched one that we just created right here um we are looking at a runtime of an hour and 51 minutes you know to create that arch and everything well if we went back in to the aspire software and uh looked at the runtime and we're just going to look at the runtime of the tool pass in this, and we're calling it a night. Uh, we got one minute. I want to end uh, at three hours here. I'm done. Um, if we come back over here, I don't even think I calculated the tool pass for this one. But this is just a 3D rough cut and a 3D finish cut. Open up for me now. I tell you what, that one beat the heck out of me. That that VCAR Pro molding toolpath kicked my butt on that one, man. Um, I, it just it fought me every step of the way. Uh, on this one here, let's make sure that uh, the correct. I want everything turned off except for that one baked model. Uh, let's look at the 3D view and make sure which one I'm looking at. That one right there. Uh, 3D rough cut. Uh, 3D rough cut. We're going to use a. That's a finish. Uh, on the finish cut, we're going to use a 16th inch tapered ball nose, uh, maybe even a 32nd if I was really wanting to get some detail, but uh, that's okay. Uh, 16th inch tapered ball nose. We're going to use the model as the boundary. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to go 0.125. The boundary offset and raster along that x axis, calculate that 3D finish cut. And while that calculates, it'll take just a second. Let me answer a couple of questions, then we're going to call it a night. Um, 
Wayne, how do you get your bit to run past the boundary when you go past it in the design? Uh, I mean, with your home spot being in the left-hand side of the corner, I hope that makes sense. Well, Fred, if I, I don't care if I start, you know, lower left corner or center or whatever, if I have a, like my profile cut or a pocket cut or what have you, if I want my bit to go past the line, it's a negative number. It's an allowance. It's a, it's an offset allowance. I'm allowing that bit to go over the line uh, to, if I was a pocket, it goes over the line to make the pocket bigger, right? If it's a negative number, positive number, it makes the pocket smaller. If it's a profile cut and I want to overcut that profile, then that's a positive number. If I want to undercut it, meaning I want to cut over my line into my material a little more, that's a negative number. So you set up those offset allowances. Uh, in this case, uh, it's a boundary offset, right? In the, in the front form of a 3D cut, it's a boundary offset. But in the other tool pass, your pocket profile cut and all that, it's called an offset allowance. Uh, negative to go over the line, positive to go away from the line, right? So that's how you get it to cut over the line. Don't care where you start from. Um, let's see here. Laney, this is where I get confused on any machine as the safe limit switch stops it from going past that spot. Okay, uh, your, your limit switch is your home position, your machine's home position should be well enough away from your limit switches that you can go beyond, you know, negative uh, on, your, on your numbers. For instance, uh, my limit switches on my home, on my machine, when I touch off on the limit switches, they move to a, my home spot, which is uh, two inches from the X, two inches from the Y, and uh, from my Z, it's like five inches down. So I have a two inch clearance and my soft limits uh, allows me to, uh, which kind of stops me before I hit my limit switch, it allows me to go past my X and Y by up to three quarters of an inch. So you can set those in your, uh, your home position, when you hit your limit switch, when it comes off that limit switch, which is the hysteresis, hysteresis, uh, basically the switch distance, um, you that shouldn't be your home position. Your, your machine should come off the switch distance and then move to its home position. So you should have plenty of room still to move to allow it to go past the line and everything. Should. If not, you need to fix that. Um. I think the reason it is cutting into your radius profile is because the software is calculating for the bottom point of the ball nose. Therefore, there's half the bit uh, striking out the past vector. Most likely it was because, uh, you know, I've got not only do I have a taper on that tapered ball nose bit, but I have that radius. So it was, it was cutting. I had to offset my vector in much tighter uh, for that to clear out and everything. So that's good, Kamara. Thanks. Uh, kind of a ball nose versus tapered ball nose thing, right? Exactly, a tapered ball nose. I have that. I had that uh, five point four degree going on that I had to deal with as well. Um, that would make a nice boundary for a sign. Absolutely, they all would. Any kind of trims and stuff like that. Uh, Fred, uh, Laney, when you use the new level for baking, is there a suggested way to name them? so that you do not get confused. So in uh, our um, software, which it won't let me do anything. Oh, it will actually let me do it. Uh, you can rename your levels. In this case, this is my bake trim level. Uh, level two is my, is my model option to, you know, my trim. Level one was the first piece of trim that we made. So I have the different pieces of trim separated by levels. Uh, but you can absolutely, when you're calculating uh, your components are creating your components. You can name your components. Uh, you can um, name your levels so that it's more organized. Oh, I have the hiccups. Uh, so it's more organized for you and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, and so if we, while that calculates in that modeling, you know, I can, uh, in my uh, different levels here, I can rename those levels to whatever I want to name them. My clipping level, my my trim level, my mirroring level, you know, because you can do all those different things in your different levels. Uh, but I could say, you know, my original model two, my original trim option two model, 
uh, is level two in this case. Level one was my original trim pieces for my first piece of trim that we made first thing. So those things can happen. Now notice how long it's taken to calculate. This is a much longer runtime because this is an, this entire thing is a model. Uh, the other one was a model as well, but uh, there's there was some pocket work, some flat work that can be done and stuff in there. So it's and, and I'm using a 16th inch tapered ball nose bit to try to get the best detail that I can, but it's going to take a long time, right? So you know uh, these are accent pieces. I don't mind them running long uh, and everything because when I'm running them, when I have no, when I have and I I got a lot of downtime from time to time uh, when I'm doing other things. And I can run these trim pieces and just start stockpiling. So that way when I'm doing projects and I got them, I got them, you know, uh, and, and everything. So um, I'm not worried about the long time. It's just, uh, you know, the, the long run time uh, and stuff like that on, on these because I, I build them up. And then when I need them, I need them or I have them. But for the holidays, you know, this is when I really make these because uh, I have holiday projects and stuff. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of those projects, you know, the gift boxes and all that I make and all, I'll, I'll decorate them with nice trimming or something, uh, and all. All right. Let's see here. Um, bum, 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 bum. uh, Fred, Fred, you could always set your project offset X and Y set distance, right? So this should be soft. Uh, this should stop the soft limit, right? Exactly. Um, you guys are answering each other in that one. Yep. So, uh, yep. You guys are taking care of that. All right, guys and girls. Uh, this is going to calculate here. I'm already seven minutes over my time. I didn't realize it's going to take longer. I wouldn't even bother. I just said, Hey, this is going to take about seven hours to run. I don't know how long it's going to take. It's going to take a long time evidently because it's taken forever. Um, to calculate. I'm actually not sure why it's taking forever to calculate. I have to look at it. Uh, oh, I know why. Damn it. My model position and my materials at the bottom, not the top. It's in the wrong spot. Oh, this is going to hurt. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Um, I just stopped that calculation because my model position and my material is wrong. It's trying to cut all the way uh, all this down at the bottom of the model. I know that's what it is. Uh, if I look, is it going to let me? Uh... God, I'm already priced. See what happens when we get three hours in. That's why this class should only be two hours. I get stupid after the last hour. Um, come on, toolpath. I'm going to stop calculating. <laughs> Killing me, man. Oh, I don't know why I did that. What are you doing, Lenny? Come on. <laughs> oh, what a cry. All right, guys and girls, y'all can start signing off now, uh, unless you're really curious as to what the runtime is, because class is over. I want to thank you all for joining me. Uh, it's been a great evening uh, as far as that goes. But... Um, uh, <laughs> until next time, I'll see you soon. I'm going to be, I'll stick around live until I get this uh, uh, calculated up. But uh, yeah, I screwed up. I, I, and it won't stop for some reason. A little stop button. It's like, nope, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's not going to stop. By the way, to stop calculating a toolpath, you got a little red X down here that you can click on. And right now it's not working for me. Come on. Yeah, I've got some serious computer issues evidently there. Or this is uh, 
it, not really. It's, I don't know. I got a new flashlight. Y'all want to see it? <laughs> got me a new tactical flashlight. Right, sucker. Can blind the bad guys now. All right, Lainey. Get her done. I don't know why Aspire is uh, still... There we go. Thank you. All right. Let's close this out. Let's quickly get back in here. Model was at the bottom of the material. It needs to be at the top. That's why it was taking so long uh, to uh, calculate because uh, I had I was trying to get rid of all that wood and everything with a 16th inch tapered ball nose. It was saying, no, my God, no. Um, we're going to uh, click OK on that. And um, I'm just going to calculate the 3D finish cut. Uh, we're going to use the model as the boundary. I'm going to calculate this. This is going to be slow, uh, but it should be much faster than it was when it was trying to mill all that wood away because I had the model on the wrong side of the material. Um, and also the reason why it's taken so long to calculate is I have my resolution for this model turned up. So there's a lot more pixels uh, to work with. And that's going to be good for me. Uh, it, it translates to the quality of the cut. When you're working in a low model resolution, when you're working with models, it translates to the quality of the cut. Okay. Uh, so if there's pixelation in your model, it's going to translate into your cut. Um, what are the limitations on the trial VCarve software? Limitations are you can't create a tool path to cut. That's it. Trial software will let you do pretty much anything you want to do as far as designing and practicing and playing around but you can't create a tool path to save it, to run it on a machine. That's the limitations. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, anyway, um, I appreciate all of you. Hope y'all have a good night. I will see you in a couple months or a month or so. Uh, we are going to be, there won't be any live videos. I will be putting out regular little, uh, recorded videos, uh, you know, on little topics. They're going to be short to the point. Uh, they, you're going to be the shortest ones. You're going to like them more than you like these live classes. They're going to be, you know, 15, 20 minutes or what have you. Um, and, uh, but uh, I will see you guys in a couple of months uh, when I get past, when we get past, uh, it, we might see in December. December. Uh, we might do a live or something or whatever, but uh, uh, through November, uh, uh, with the travels and the training and everything, uh, you won't, we won't have any classes for the month of November for the rest of October and the month of November. So be sure to join me when I come back, I'll put out announcements on the Facebook, uh, spindle TV, uh, spindle training videos channel on Facebook and also the digital wood carver owners group for those of you that are digital wood carver owners. And, uh, we're not going to sit here and wait. I do have to get running. Uh, this is going to take about five hours to carve that piece of trim. It's what it is. It is what it is. Uh, go ahead and create some uh, trim of your own. Uh, create some toolpaths. See what it is for you. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Laney.Shaughnessy at SpindleTV.com. Have a great day. We'll see you in uh, about four to six weeks. All right, guys. Uh, keep an eye out. There will be videos through that time, but they're not going to be live. See you guys. Join me when we come back. Have a great night. It would help if I hit the stop button before I... <laughs>